Uh, let me do some of the newest stuff first and kind of make my way backwards. How about that? Yeah. For the MO, did you all want to do an MO diagram? Anybody want to give me a molecule? Give me an atom with me, boron and neon. Somebody here said something. An nitrogen? Okay, I don't know if that's what you said, but. All right, do you want to have a charge? Yes! yes. <laughs> no, plus four is ridiculous. <laughs> no, give me a positive charge. I want to give you a negative charge with a Plus two? Okay. So this would be a reasonable, we want to give you like a plus seven or uh, that would just be a charge above plus two would be kind of weird on the planet, okay? So here's what you do. Draw your energy. You don't need to draw the four electrons. All you need to draw are the valence electrons. So this comes from two nitrogens. Now you need to distribute this two plus charge. You have two options. I don't care which one you do. You could do this, I'll, I'll give you both options, two plus ones, or you can erase this and go a two plus over here. It does not matter, and it does not matter which side the two plus is on. It could be on the right or the left. So I'm going to do this one just to make the two atoms different. Is that okay? So uh, let's write the electron configuration, 1s2, 2s2, 2p3, yes. And 1s2, 2s2, 2p, what? Just one. All right. And now we get a different, uh, let's see, if I'll do black. Uh, we've got a 2s and a 2p. 2p and a 2s. All right. We've got, so I recommend always starting from the lowest and moving your way to the highest. Notice I didn't write the 1s because those are four electrons. So for the 2s, every bond has two parts, the bonding and the antibonding. Connected the dots, like that. You want to name them. Remember everything with a single line is a sigma. These are both sigma 2s, but the lower energy is bonding. The higher energy is antibonding, so we show that with a star. And then nitrogen, you need to remember, has the pattern 2, 1, those are all the bonding, and then 2, 1. Draw the dots. Okay. And then pi to t, two lines, so I'm thinking pi. One line, sigma 2p. The subscript's always going to be 2p up here because that's where they come from. Two lines, so pi 2p, but it's above the middle, so this is anti-bonding, so I put the star. And then one line here, so sigma, subscript is 2p, superscript star, again, because it's anti-bonding, it's above the middle. Okay? All right, so far all okay, no questions? Or the, is there a question? All right. The last part is to put in the electrons. So first fill in the atoms. On the right hand side I have a 2s2, 2p1. On the left hand side I have a 2s2, 2p3. And it needs, the 2p3 must be filled in like this. They shouldn't be paired at all. Because when they're at the same energy level, they fill different, uh, different lines or different little boxes. And then when we fill it up, we go from the bottom picture first, and then move your way upwards to higher picture. So for the bottom, which is the 2s part, there's two on each side for a total of four. So you fill them like this, one, two, and then you go up high, three and four in the antibody. For the picture up top, the 2p, three on one side, one on the other for a total of four. So you go one, and then unpaired two, and then pair three and four. The next one would have gone up here if that was five. Okay, two common questions. One is, what's the magnetism? You would say what? Diatomic. Uh, not diatomic, diamagnetic. Make sure you get that right on the test. 
Okay, diatomic means there's two atoms together. Diamagnetic has to do the magnetism, means they're all paired. Bond order. Yeah, uh, what's the first number here? Four, because there's four electrons in the bonding, minus zero. Zero electrons in the antibonding. So four over two, that's just two. That means it's a double bond. We're done. That's a pretty normal question. Again, I could have put the two plus on the left, or I could have made them both plus one. It does not matter. Yes? So what if I'm doing on the order if it's the opposite? So it's a bond order. If you calculate the bond order and you do not get an integer, just report whatever you calculate. For ML theory, it will either be a whole number or a half. Do not round, and there's no significant figures here because these are exact numbers of electrons. Yeah, so it's an exact number. Yes? Yeah, oxygen. What happens with oxygen? For the neon, the question is, it flips to be 1, 2, 2, 1. So the bottom two of the two key energy levels flip. That's right. Okay, let's move on. This is it for MO. That's it. You can name them, put the right orders, and then fill in the electrons. You're good. That's going to be like a 20 something point problem on the exam. Yeah. Oh, you'll have to do it really loud. Or it's nitrogen and what? Uh, if, if it was nitrogen and fluorine together, we would not give you that. We're doing homonuclear, the same atoms. Yes? On the N2 plus side, does it matter what line? On the N2 plus side for the P orbitals, it doesn't matter where I put that single electron. Yeah, follow the pattern. And this is just... Yeah, I put the first one on the left-hand side. Yeah, the first electron will go on the left. Last question, what happened to the bond? If it was N2 to minus, what pattern would I follow? It always follows the atom. And that's why when they suggested it, I wasn't going to do that one. But yeah, it would follow the atom, not the number of electrons. All right, let's move on. Uh, delocalization, by the way, somebody mentioned that for MO theory, all you need to know for delocalization is that if something has resonance, yeah, those electrons in resonance are both delocalized, meaning they're not in one place, they move around. That's it, so it's just a definition. Uh, let's go to some of these other things, and I actually, since you asked about Vesper and all that stuff, I believe I did bring a practice problem that I thought was pretty reasonable, but not easy. So this involves shape and, and all, all this good stuff. So I'm going to draw this molecule right there. I'm telling you it's V-shaped. I want to know the shape, the angles, sigma bonds, pi bonds, formal charge, polarity, and the hybridization state. Okay, everything. So this will get at several concepts that y'all ask me about. So let's try this. First, I'll start with the valence electrons. Since this is a tougher one, I want to draw it with you. Valence electrons. There's two carbons. Uh, they have four electrons each. There's two oxygens at six. Nitrogen at five. And then I need to subtract one with this plus charge. Uh, wow, so what is this? 24. Sorry. Okay, it's not telling me. All right. Which atom is the center atom? Well, there's multiple center atoms. I'm wondering which one is the most centered atom. It has to be in a line because it's going to be V-shaped. So what's the most center atom? Or nitrogen, yeah. Do you know how we knew that? No. No? Look at the pattern here. A list, a list, and a single atom. Usually, Usually, the one listed by itself is the most centered atom. And it will be symmetrically shaped such that these listed atoms are on both sides of the single atom. 
Does that kind of make sense? So it's a CO on each side of the N. Does anybody know why I'm putting the C kind of on the on a more central position and the O on the terminal? Yeah, it would be extremely rare to have carbon as a terminal or on the most outermost position. That would be a very rare compound. Usually carbon somewhere in the middle. Okay. And it has to be linear shaped because I or like one after another because I wanted to get to a V-shape eventually. So, I would go 2, 4, 6, 8. 8 of 24 right now. And now I do the terminal. Uh, let's see, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Uh, and now, 20. I only have four more electrons to go. Where do you think I'll put them? Yeah, if I don't know where to put them, usually I'll put them on the center most to add. Now, you didn't have to do that, but that's usually a good guess. If you have leftover electrons, and there's, in this case, multiple choices of where to put it, the center most electron can be, a uh, center most atom can be a great place to start. By the way, if you guess wrong, which could happen, that's fine, there's two ways you know you'll are wrong. Uh, one is checking the octet, and the second is checking the formal charge. If those two don't work, you're probably wrong. Okay? Octets need to be filled unless it's an exception, and the formal charge, the ideal formal charge is? Zero. Yeah, so if you don't have a zero, for a charged species like this, we're not expecting zeros everywhere, but you're usually going for zero formal charge everywhere. So this is a plus one charge overall. How am I going to fix this? Double bond. So what if I did this? I'll scratch this off and make that a double bond. Scratch this off and make that a double bond. How are my octets? They're off on carbon. By the way, carbon has what formal charge? Plus one. What's the formal charge on oxygen? Zero. And what's the formal charge on nitrogen? It's minus one. Minus one on nitrogen. Could this be better? Is there a way to get this better? What would I do? Uh, you can probably see a couple options possible. Uh, one option is to make a triple bond here. Like that. That's one option. Another option is to make uh, take those two lone pairs off of nitrogen and make double bonds everywhere. Something like that. Okay, go through. I'm going to give you about 15 seconds. Put the formal charges on both of those. Formal charges everywhere. Get that out. Let's do the shape and see what, how it pans out. 
So we only do shape for centermost atoms, so that's to be in both carbons and the nitrogen. Let's do the bottom here first. That carbon is what shape? What best for shape? It'd be linear, two groups. Okay, same with the other carbon. How about that nitrogen? Also linear. So this thing is a straight line. As uh, the nitrogen, both carbons have two groups. So they're linear and they have bond angles of 180. That's a good Lewis structure, except if I read the problem, it won't work. You see that? I'm telling you it has to be V-shaped. And a line does not look like a V. Okay, good. All right, how about these carbons up here? What shape are they? Linear two groups, okay? How about, so that's true for both carbons. How about the nitrogen? What's the electronic geometry? The electronic is tetrahedral, four groups. Okay, but the molecular geometry is? That's bent. That's your shape, right? Because if the middle one's bent, then uh, that top picture, if I redraw it down here, would have just the right shape. So I know the first one, even though the formal charges aren't ideal, were the molecule that my, was the molecule that my question was looking for. And this was a minus one plus, and plus. there's the actual shape. What's the ideal bond angle of that nitrogen? 109.5 because of the tetrahedral shape. All right, let's do some best uh, hybridization stuff. What's the hybridization of either carbon? <laughs> SP, let's write that down. Two groups is SP. What's the hybridization of this nitrogen? Yeah, SP3 because there's four groups. Make sure if you don't know it, know uh, that table that I put in the reader. That looks like this. So you count the groups and that tells you the hybridization. Okay. So that's how I'm getting SP versus SP3 and all that stuff. SP2, et cetera. Okay. Uh, how many sigma bonds does this molecule have? One, two, three, four. Every bond counts as a sigma. How many pi bonds? Also four. Every double bond counts for two. One, two, three, four. Okay? Uh, this one, by the way, also has four pi bonds and four sigma bonds. So you get the same answer there. Uh, let me see if I missed anything that I wanted to do on that one. Oh, yeah. Uh, first. Polar or non-polar, this one right here. If you look, is it asymmetric? Yeah, the CO is on one side but not on the other. This is polar. It's asymmetric. How about this one? Yeah, that one would be called non-polar because it's linear. It's fully symmetric. Because it's linear and symmetric. So it's fully balanced. So if we did this one, we would get a non-polar. Okay. Yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, I think there's one more thing I wanted to do with this. All right, what I want to do is figure out what orbitals overlap to make what bonds. So, let me get a pen, call a pen here. Let's look at that bond right there. First of all, what kind of bond is that? Sigma or pi? Sigma. And so, the carbon and nitrogen overlap, and we have to... I uh, will often ask you what orbitals overlap to make this bond. Well, the carbon orbital is what? Yeah, SP overlaps with? And if you're wondering where I got that, I just read it off the picture right there. That's it. Okay. So that's a common question. 
It's a little bit harder, so this is the carbon-nitrogen bond here. If I did the carbon-oxygen bond, how many bonds am I talking about now? Three, because it's a triple bond. And those are how many sigmas? One. One sigma and? Two pi. Okay, so there's a sigma and two pi's for that. For the, uh, this one right here. Okay, the sigma, the carbon, is what hybrid orbital? Sp. Sp, and that overlaps with what from the oxygen? It's unhybridized, so it is. What do I have over there? 2p. Remember, if it's terminal, we're considering it unhybridized, so it would be 2p. Is that okay? Terminal, being on the outside. It's considered a 2p, plus it's a hydrogen. Okay, for the pi's, it is always what two orbitals? Yeah, for a pi, it's always a 2p to a 2p. So these are both identical. Two p orbitals are what make pi bonds. So if you're generating a pi bond, they're coming from two two p orbitals. Okay. I'll give you a second to think about that. This will be your last chance to ask a question. Oh, and there'll be one more thing I want to do from this. Uh, yes. Can you figure out the overlap without Lewis structure? No. You have to have Lewis structure to get the hybridization. So hybrid, Lewis structure precedes hybridization, which precedes what overlaps. Yeah. Must go in that order. Yes. Well, what I was going to do? Pi bonds in this class will always be 2p to 2p. You won't learn anything else until you get to inorganic chemistry. Yeah. Uh, yeah, last question, I'm going to move on. So on the exam, how would this question be phrased? Which overlaps the bond? Yeah, how would this be phrased on exam? What orbitals overlap to make the carbon nitrogen bond? Well, what over orbitals overlap to make the uh, whatever the other one is. Carbon oxygen bond. Okay. Oh, okay, last one. We got really got to move on. Um, can you just say one more time how you decided nitrogen was the most central atom? How did I decide nitrogen? Now, you might have decided something else. And most likely your Lewis structure or form, your formal charges or octet would not work. Or would not be the best. But the way I decided is I looked at what was given. This is actually a chemical formula. And so the one that is listed by itself most often would be a central atom. Okay. Unless it's like a hydrogen or something like that. Is that all right? Yeah. And then this is CO. It's symmetric. Okay. Uh, last kind of question we could ask about hybridization. Can somebody... Would you prefer me to do the hybridization of carbon or nitrogen? And I don't mean this, I mean drawing it out, the scheme. Nitrogen is kind of new, let's do nitrogen. How's that? So if we ask you to draw the hybridization scheme, this is what we need. And if you have my practice uh, problems for the final, this is one of these is on there. So let's do it for nitrogen on that molecule. Nitrogen, by the way, is 1s2, 2s2, 2p3. So let's draw that, not the four electrons, just the valence, 2s, 2p. Fill in the electrons, 2s2, and 2p3, because of the three left. When this hybridizes, again, what hybridization was the nitrogen? From the question before, sp3, as soon as I hear sp3, I always draw the sp3, which looks like this. So you should know the sp3 picture, that's this one, the sp2 picture, and the sp picture, okay? They, they look kind of similar. All right.
Now, what you do is you go over here and you count the total number of electrons, five, and you're going to fill them in uh, over here. One, two, three, four, five. Okay? And that will be the hybridization scheme for nitrogen. Okay? Any questions on that? Okay. So we did this for carbon in, in class, only there wasn't this fifth electron. That's the only difference. All right. Let's see what we did. I think we just did a lot. I did Vesper's example. I did a hybridization. I did bond order. I did resonance. I did polarity. That is awesome. Okay, I'm going to do trends, which involves all of these. Trends. I'm going to flip over. Let's see, I'll find a page for you to hear in the first. So. As I said before, in case you forgot, I will repeat it. On the final, this is page 83 of the reader. On the final, at the beginning of the final, I recommend drawing this on your periodic table so you don't forget. Just do it first, and I'd actually write down anything you think you would forget. Let's do this on your final. Uh, and really, pretty much what you need to know is the trends. So, is there, I was asked about ionization energy and shielding. Besides this trend, is there anything else you want to know about them? This is kind of the main thing. Is there somebody or a person who asked this and want, want to know more about ionization energy or the shielding? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You might have seen in other pictures the metallic character kind of going like this. That's the same thing as writing it like this. So, going to the left and down, the same as writing an arrow going across diagonally. We're, we're intending the same concept. Anything else, or anybody? Because we've just knocked out chapter eight with this picture. Yes. Oh, that's a good question. Yeah. Okay. Let's move this. Okay. Let's pick something kind of innocuous. Let's pick uh, oxygen. Okay. Now, I'm going to put an oxygen to minus. Larger or smaller? Larger. Okay. How about an oxygen minus? Smaller than Hopefully you said that. The more, the higher the charge, the bigger it gets. So let's do the opposite. Uh, let's see. If I have magnesium, which one's smaller, right or left? Right. Yeah, it'll be like this, as far as size, remember we we're doing radius. Okay. Is this biggest, smallest, or in the middle? Middle. Middle, yep. Yeah. So remember, when it has a charge, it gets smaller. The more the charge is, the higher the charge, the smaller it gets. So Mg3 plus would be even smaller. And the cations are significantly smaller than anions, and the reverse is true. The anion, or uh, let me say that again. The cations are significantly smaller than neutral, and the anions are significantly larger than neutral. Yes? Can you like, um, compare one to the other? Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. I like that. That's exactly where I was going. Now I want to put all of these in a line, all six of these. Is that kind of what you were asking? Okay. What's the biggest? All six of these. O2 minus. O2 minus, then O minus, and then oxygen and magnesium we get from the trend. So oxygen is more up and to the right, magnesium is more left and down. So if you were going to write it all out,
Is that okay? So the charge, as far as we're concerned in CAMP 2A, does not trump the periodic table. The charge is the most important, actually. So uh, I would say like this, if you see anions, they're always the biggest. If you see cations, they're always the smallest. And the neutrals, you'll get from the trend. Is that OK? Or is there a question on that? Neutrals, and then I meant oxygen and magnesium I got from the periodic table trend. Did I get that right? Oh, wait. I think I flipped too. Is that right? Oh, I'm sorry to upset your day. OK. These are all the small seeds, the biggest, but I think I got the middle too wrong. So check. Is magnesium larger? Yeah. Yeah. Then oxygen. So this is from the trend of the table. And these are just anions, so they're large. And these are just cations, so they're small. Cool. Thanks for catching that. Do I need to explain this again? Are any questions? Yes. Hi. Oh. Yes. Okay. Uh, question. So would SE2 minus greater than Cl minus? Uh, would SE2 minus versus Cl minus? What do you think? Let me write it down. Which one's bigger, right or left? Because of the more charge. And we're just following trends, so you might find some exceptions if you looked up the radius, but we're just testing you on trends. Yes? That are what? Isoelectronic, meaning uh, like oxygen minus and sulfur minus. Oxygen minus one and sulfur minus one, for example. Well, if it's oxygen 2 minus and Na plus, the minus would always be larger than the plus. Okay. Well, I, we probably wouldn't give you that one, but if we gave you a more realistic example would be this, these two. Where they have the same charge. Is that a fair kind of where you're going? Now you can ask me more later, but in this case, selenium is bigger than sulfur just by the trend. So we go like that. Okay. All right, I'm ready to move on. Yes, quickly. When they have no charge, or when they're the same element with the same charge, follow the trend of the periodic table. Left is down, is larger. That's it. Okay? Ready to move on? Okay. We've actually finished all of this stuff, then, as far as I can tell. Let me go to uh, this over here. Let's do redox. I have some redox examples planned for you, actually. <laughs> All right. Let's try this redox problem. I want you to yeah, we want to balance this with redox, half reactions, okay? Now, if you don't remember from exam one, I guess it really was, uh, what do I ignore when it's given originally in the question? I ignore water and H plus and OH minus. Why do I ignore those three specifically? Because in the four steps of balancing, those are what we add. So because they're what we're adding, well, I ignore them. Okay, so in this case, let me write it to the side in case you didn't hear that. Scratch paper here on the right. I'm ignoring these because they're part of the balancing method. So if I see them, I ignore them. 
pretend they're not there. Okay? So how would I balance this? Well, I have only two elements left, the hydrogen and the oxygen. So part of the half reaction is this, and the other half is this. There's no reactant now because I just ignored water. The reason I'm ignoring water is because you actually don't know which side it's supposed to go on. Should it go with the hydrogen or should it go with the water? It's hard to tell. So that's why those three on the right, I always recommend cross it out when you see it. Okay? All right, so let's try to balance this. Follow your four steps. Step one, balance whatever's not oxygen or hydrogen. Doesn't apply here. Step two, balance oxygen. So up here, doesn't apply. There's no oxygen. Step three, balance the hydrogen. There's two here. Well, how do I balance hydrogen? H plus. Please don't just write hydrogen here or don't write H2. That would be really ridiculous. Okay. I'm going to put two here because there's two H's on each side. What's step four? Balance what? Yeah, balance yeah, the charge with electrons. Do electrons go on the right or left? The left. The left. Two electrons plus a 2H plus goes to H2. That makes the charge zero on both sides. Okay, got that one balanced. Let's do the bottom one. Step one, balance whatever's not oxygen or hydrogen. Doesn't apply. Step two, balance the oxygens with water. water. So I'm going to put two waters here, so I have two oxygens on each side. Now see, if you would have put the waters here, you're messed up. <laughs> so that, had you not known to put it here, that would have been a huge problem, and that's why I ignore it. Okay? Remember, I ignore those three. Okay, step three, balance the hydrogen with H+. Plus. I need four H pluses here. Step four, balance the charge of electrons. Will the electrons go on the right or the left? Right. The right, because it's overall zero charge here and a plus four charge here. So it looks like I need, I guess, four electrons. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. So now I add my half reactions together. What am I going to do to the top reaction? I have to multiply by two. This is multiply by one. And the reason is I need the electrons to cancel. They're my intermediate. They better cancel in the overall reaction. So what am I going to get? 2H2O goes to, uh, and now, oh, I forgot the 4H plus over here on the left from the first reaction. For the other reaction, 2H2 plus O2 plus 4H plus. Now you cancel everything that you see on both sides. So there's 4H plus on both sides. We'll cancel that. And I'll write uh, my final answer here. It's 2H2O. Oh, whoa. 2H2O plus 2H2 plus O2. I balanced this according to acidic conditions, but what would you call this? Is this acidic conditions? No. Let me ask this another way. What would I have to do if I went to basic conditions? I add OH based on what? How many H pluses I see, but there's none. So this is kind of neither acidic nor basic. Because we ended up with no H pluses nor OH minuses. And you could have actually just balanced that originally just by putting twos here. But sometimes we uh, give you something that can be balanced either way. Okay, did you get the concept? I want to try one more, yeah. Uh, I think on the final, we're not grading you on states, but if we did, I can't remember right now, but this would be a liquid, because it's water, and these two would be what? Yeah. That's something you should know. Oh yeah, thank you, I almost forgot to do that. Let's okay, shh. For easy ones, where uh, there's a reactant, it's easy to do the reduction and oxidation reaction ahead of time. For weird ones like this one, 
I would recommend balancing it first and then going back and figuring out what's what. Okay? So now let's figure out what's what. Okay? So I'll try to do a different color here. I'll do it in brown since this is black and blue. This is a plus one charge for this hydrogen. What's the charge here? Zero because it's elemental state. What's the start uh, charge here for oxygen? Negative two and zero. So the first one is called what? This is the reduction reaction because it was reduced numerically from plus one to zero. This is the oxidation because it increases. So this is the oxidation half reaction. Minus two to zero goes up in oxidation state. So the oxidizing uh, agent is what element? The oxidizing agent. Hydrogen. It's reduced and it's the oxidizing agent. So thus the oxygen is the, what is oxidized and it's called the reducing agent. Okay, let's just do one more. This one's really funny one I thought of it in my office. Uh, Electrons, will I add electrons to the right or left? Right. 
uh, I would put it to the left, and that puts a negative 2 on both sides. See how the negative 2 on both sides. All right, let's see the next reaction. Step one, balance whatever is the oxygen. Uh, not oxygen or hydrogen, doesn't apply. Step two, balance of oxygen, doesn't apply, there's no oxygen. Step three, balance of hydrogen, 2H plus, so just have two hydrogens on both sides. And now last step, what will I add to both sides? Or not both sides, where will I add the electrons, right away? So I will multiply both reactions by what number? Number one, because the electrons are the same. Two electrons on both sides. So I will get 2H2 goes to 2H plus plus 2H minus. And I'll cancel it all out, and I get this. There we go. Uh, by the way, what states are both the ones on the right? Where did I get the 2H2 from? Is that the question? Because there's two of them. What's the state of H2? Yeah. Yeah. Questions? Yes. Anywhere from negative 2 to plus 2. What's the problem? 
these two, that's right, can't be equal. So this is no good. Okay, is that okay or do I need to do more? One more, okay. Um, 5F M sub L equals negative 3 M sub S equals negative a half. Okay, so N is 5, what's L? Yeah, 3, F goes with the number 3, M sub L is negative 3, M sub S is minus a half. Is it okay? Let's start with M sub S. Is that one okay? Yeah, it doesn't matter. It's plus one half or minus one half. It's not associated with the other ones. How about the, if L is 3, is okay, so M sub L is minus 3? Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Be aware from minus 3 to plus 3. How about the N and L? That's okay. This works. That's allowable. Check. That works. That's good. All the numbers check out. All right. Next question, yeah. For the first one, N and L cannot be equal. That's not okay. So that means it's not allowable. N must be larger than L. Okay, second category. All possible. All possible quantum numbers. So this is where, this can go two different ways really. One way is say we give you n equals 4. And we want you to write out all possible. And let's say, let's make it harder. And m sub l equals negative 1. Yes, I like this one. Okay. So then, what are all possible m sub s values? Yeah, it can be either, it doesn't matter. Plus or minus a half. Okay, now L is going to be the tough one now. What's the largest L can be? Three. Three. So it could be anywhere from zero to three. But, well, let me write that down. We'll cross off the ones we don't like. So zero, one, two, three. Now, this corresponds with N equals four. But we also have an M sub L value. Which one of these will not work? Zero. <coughs> Zero will not give you a minus one here. How about these three? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So now we have all our possible M sub L value. L and M sub S value. So we're good. We can't have L equals zero because that would not give us an M sub L of minus one. Otherwise, all the L values are good. We're good? Okay, there's a variant on this question. The variant would go like this. Just go on the next page here. Uh, let's say n equals 4, but this time I'll say how many spin down electrons. So how many spin down electrons would exist within n equals 4? Oh my goodness, it's 915 numbers? Oh my gosh. Okay. Um, okay, here we go. Uh, L could be 3, 2, 1, or 0. So M sub L for 3 could be 0 plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3. For 2, 0 plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2. For, zero, uh, for 1, 0 or plus or minus 1. And for zero to zero. Okay. In each M sub L value, how many electrons would fit in? Two per value listed here under M sub L. So for example, if I counted the number, number of values uh, in existence, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Here there's one, two, three, four, five. Here there's one, two, three, and here there's one value, just a zero. So I can, if I multiply those by two, that would be the total number of electrons. Half of those would be spin up, and half would be spin down. So if I add this up, let's see, that's eight and eight, 16.
there would be 16 spin up and 16 spin down. So to answer the question, there's 16 spin down electrons. There's also 16 spin up for a total of 32. So 16 would be the correct answer in this case. Um, well, let me look at what we have to do. Okay, let me take a little poll here because we're getting a little late. We only have this room reserved for so long. Uh, I have a couple options. I could, so I'm going to go to specific questions in a little bit. Do you want...